Hello, friends. We have an injury report on Jason Glaspy. As you can see, his girlfriend has removed his spine, rendering him incapable of watching the game. <laughs> This is Strange Love After Hours. I'm your host, Cami Chaos. Welcome, babies. Where was I? I'm Cami Chaos. This is Strange Love Live. Chaos, chaos, chaos. We've got two producers tonight, one behind this side, this one behind this side say hello to producer morgan and producer dr normal it's like monkeys in a barrel and tonight our guest is jason glasby hi hi jason i'm fine how are you i'm fine how are you i'm good i can't believe in all the time that we've known you and we've had the show you've you've like made little appearances here and there when we've done special projects special projects but you've never actually gotten to come sit on the couch i haven't even been down here during filming that's sad. Yeah. Why did you never come down when someone else was on? I didn't have an invitation. I felt scared. You felt scared? Yeah. I didn't know. You could have come down. You know, I don't want to intrude. Mm. And if there is an You're invitation... You're a very courteous man. If, I'm, if there is an invitation, I don't show up. You are a very courteous man. All right. We're not here to talk about how polite you are, though. No. Which is very... I'm not. Very polite. It's an act. Let's start and talk first about... You know what? Let's let's not talk about that first. Let's first talk about bacon. Bacon. And I'm thirsty. Okay. Because you've offloaded them. Fire cell. Everything must go. <laughs> okay. So tell me what happened. What brief rundown in case someone's been living under a rock? What was bacon? Okay. Bacon was a actual online retail site where mm-hmm. we sold real bacon on the internet and shipped it to people mm-hmm. in packages and shirts and shirts. We sold a lot of shirts um, and aprons. <clears throat> And aprons yeah. and stickers and stuff. Yeah. A lot of people actually th- think like, oh, yeah, bacon, right? You sold someone else's. N- n- wait, no. You actually had bacon in your office, and mm-hmm. we packaged it in little boxes and took it to the post office every day. And yeah, they cracked me up. Yeah, we had a whole fridge just full. It was actually kind of cool. We had, like, the bacon fridge, and mm-hmm. then we had, like, the office fridge, which had, like, milk and stuff. Yeah, the first time I was at uh, <laughs> Pie, I was like, why are there two? Oh, yeah. Bacon. So yeah, we had a um, company called Bacon with Scott Kavitan and Michael Richardson. Um, mm-hmm. We started it actually uh, the beginning of January last year. We uh, we put it together in three weeks. We launched at Master Bacon, mm-hmm. which you were a judge at. I, I was first Tasty. time I met you. Was that the first time we met? Yes. Which we should actually talk about because I was scared to death of you. All right, like, oh my gosh. I want to talk about that. Let's get through the bacon and then okay. we'll talk about that before we talk about unthirsty. Okay. So um, yeah, we uh, we kind of just. Scott was playing around with um, a website. He was just called the Bacon Geek. He was just messing mm-hmm. around. Well, because everyone knows how much Scott loves the bacon. Yes, he does love the bacon. And I love the bacon also. Me and Matt King. I also love the bacon. <laughs> Matt King just and I had played with a blog called The Bacon Desk. And we mm-hmm. were just basically reblogging everything that we came up. There was this like ridiculous bacon meme stuff. Yeah. Bacon bra, bacon mints, bacon band-aids. The bacon um, bra freaks the hell out of me. Just It's kind of gross. Yeah. And they could have found a better model. Anyway, All right. we're, um, we're on the same page with that. So we uh, we were talking, it's like, you know, what if we actually started a company online and we sold bacon? Mm-hmm. And um, it was kind of silly, but it's also one of those things like, you know, we were kind of screwing around. Scott and Michael were both of the dupe at the time, and they kind of mm-hmm. needed an off an offshoot of their creative energies that yeah. the dupe wasn't serving. And so we gave ourselves three weeks to uh, start the site, and we three started weeks. in three weeks. <laughs> Um, and it ran for a year, did really well. Uh, it was fun. But at the end of the year, um, this is 2009, uh, uh, Scott and Michael had both moved on to Urban Airship, which was doing really, really well. Mm-hmm. Um, Congrats on the funding, guys. Yeah, by the they're way. doing awesome. Congratulations. I had moved on to some other projects, and Bacon was still going on. It hadn't made any of us rich, but it was making money. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was also, it's become more of a burden to make sure the packages went out. the uh, customer service kept up um and there was this one guy who just really wanted to buy it and kept asking us um for a couple months so finally we said okay you can have it 
Nice. So he took over uh, basically right at the end of December. And so the site's... Less than a year. Yes. Three weeks to launch, 12 months to sell. Wow. Yeah. And so before we get into the... I want to talk about I want to talk about Master Bacon and meeting me because I like myself. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but before that, you guys are writing a book now about about the experience of starting it? Yeah, so last year um, we got an opportunity to speak at Web Visions. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember that. Scott and I co-presented, and then later we actually ended up on Strange Love Live. Mm -hmm. My first time on Strange Love Live Special mm -hmm. Edition. Um, so we talked about, uh, so basically our, our speech at, presentation at Web Visions was just how you start a company in three weeks. Mm -hmm. And we really focused on, you know, the whole iterative uh agile web development process and how it can relate to um, small businesses online now. Mm -hmm. um, launch fast, ask questions later, constantly evolve, see what's working, see what's not, change it. So we spoke at Web Visions and it was a really fun talk and we had a great audience. Everyone was really interested because at this point, you know, it's a terrible economy. Everyone's trying to figure out how do I do this? Yeah. Um, and and not only were you doing something successfully, but you were doing something really fun. Right. And it is definitely sexy content, and yeah. everyone likes sexy content. Yeah. Um, thus, strange love life. <clears throat> so, um, right after the presentation, you know, a couple people came up and they're asking, like, you know, what was that site you talked about? This and that. And this woman just came up and said, "Would you be willing to write a book about it?" And we're like, um, <laughs> "Y'all? Yeah, are you, who are you?" And she's she's a woman from Peach Pit, Peach Pit Press, mm -hmm. really nice lady, and she's become our publisher. Nice. Yeah. So we're actually a little behind. Mm -hmm. Don't tell anyone. Um, but we have about half the book done. About half the book. Yeah, there were some tweets the other day that had me singing uh, uh, country music, I'll be honest. <laughs> yes, we are fast and furiously. Uh, and we were watching Smoking the Band as we, uh, yeah. as we wrote last Sunday. Yeah. Because we have a long ways to go and a short time to get there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So halfway through, when's the, when's the due date? Uh, in a month. Do you, <laughs> do you feel like you're in high school? I've, I'm way past grounded. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Okay. So, why did you decide to have Master Bacon the event? And I'll I'll tell them what Master Bacon was. It was basically a it was a food competition. Everyone had to cook dishes that contained bacon. Actually, not that contained it, that highlighted bacon. Featured. Featured bacon. Um, and it was a competition to see who could make the best dish. And there were several categories. And not only did my household submit. Two dishes, but I was I was a judge. I refrained from voting on slight the, conflict of interest. But I, we'll I, slide. I I was honest about it, and I I didn't actually vote on their dishes. So um, Scott is famous for um, throwing these uh, pizza parties. Yes, brings everyone over to his house. He cooks his own pizza, handmade dough, all that. The man stuff. likes to entertain. He does, and yeah. he's very good at. It. Yeah. So um, he started talking about throwing a bacon party. Mm -hmm. Um. But that took off a little bit more than the pizza party did. Mm -hmm. And pretty soon there was like 60 people planning on coming. And mm -hmm. so we thought, wow, this is a little bigger than we were expecting. Maybe we're not going to have it at Scott's house. Mm -hmm. uh, so he's, I was actually in South America at the time. And so we were chatting online um, just over I am. And um, he was saying, hey, well, what do you think I should do? And I said, well, we look for a venue. And so we started looking for a venue. And we ended up getting the Davis Street Tavern, and he's like, well, how do we make it more interesting? And for one point, almost we almost had a, the Discover Channel uh, wanted to do a feature on it. I heard about that. Um, turns out they ended up taking a different angle and doing a thing on a different show or a different place. But um, Big mistake on their part. Huge. Oh, look, huge. there's a picture right there. Yeah. There's me, and there's Pete, and there's my uh, my little tiny chef. And is that Verso? Uh, yes, it is. Part? Yes, it is. So we threw, uh, we threw this party. Mm -hmm. Um and it was the idea of that party was getting formed about the same time as bacon yeah and so we had a date for it january 17th um be, right before christmas is when we were really talking seriously about starting the company mm -hmm. and so we're like well if we're gonna th launch or if we're gonna hold a big bacon party what better time to launch a bacon business definitely and as we've said before you know the best way to get something done is to have some sort of constraint on what you're doing yeah. be it artificial man-made or outside control but um so having only three weeks actually probably made the site better and got us to launch it might have taken six months if we hadn't and that kind of reminds me of a uh, six weeks to do a 30-hour day <laughs> same kind of thing same kind of stupid thing works out really well right yeah i'm more 
fan of a 30 hour month, but we can talk about this another time. We can. Let's, let's, let's. So, why were you afraid to? So, you, the first time I ever met you was at Bacon, Master Bacon. You came in and I was like, I? everyone's like, oh, Cammy Chaos is here. And I'm like, I've seen her around. And like, we haven't <laughs> met her yet. And they're like, no, you should meet her. And I'm like, <laughs> okay. And you just came in and you were with Kelly uh-huh. and someone else. And I was there and I'm like, oh, hi, I'm Jason. And you're like, hi. And you were like, I'm about to judge mode. You know, and you were like, I'm, I'm serious. I get, I get very determined sometimes. And later it made more sense after mm-hmm. I got to know you because I realized like that, you know. But I was like, oh, my gosh, she's all tatted out and she's serious. <laughs> and I am not cool enough for Cami Chaos. <laughs> and so I was just like, I'm going to I'm going <laughs> to quietly go over here and just let her be a judge because she might punch me. <laughs> but ever since then, I've gotten to know you. You're actually really nice. I'm, I'm not mean. At all. I'm not, not a all. mean person. But you do I was, poke. I was, I do. Yeah. Two, now, two pokes. Two pokes equals a hit. So you actually said that on strain, on 30 hour day. Uh-huh. My wife saw it. One of the few things that she I saw. I like your wife. Loves it. And now she constantly reminds me that two pokes is a hit. And if I do something wrong that isn't quite worth getting struck over, uh-huh. <laughs> she double pokes me and reminds me that two pokes is a hit. I like that. I like her. Yeah. She Smart. did it this morning, actually, even. Yeah. And reminded me that I was going to be on Strange Love Live and that two pokes is a hit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm glad someone remembers something I did at 30 Hour Day. 30 Hour Day was awesome. It's kind of a blur. Um, when are we going to see footage of 30 Hour Day? Like, <laughs> oh, you asked the, the dirty question. You said if you talk about anything. We can talk, we can talk about anything. But you don't have to I don't care. Oh, do you think I have control over the footage? Do you see me behind the computer? Next question. <laughs> Move on. Let's talk about Unthirsty, which is another <laughs> another startup that has been sold and off your plate. Yes. Um, what was Unthirsty? Because we originally, at one point, we were going to have you on to talk about it. Matt and, and we I just, were come Yeah, on. we just never had it scheduled. Yeah. Um, so Matt King and I used to work uh, for a car magazine way back when. That's actually how I became friends with Matt. A car magazine, like with the ladies laying across the, the hood of the car and the... No. Well, the spinoff for that was actually Jason on Cars. <laughs> <laughs> and you laugh, but I'm actually being serious. I'll, oh, my um, gosh. So I used, we used to work at a car magazine, and then after that, I did car reviews okay. for myself. Okay. On a site called Jason on Cars, actually. Okay. But um, you weren't actually laying on the cars No, or I something. just wrote about them. Okay. Um, and so Matt and I, for a while, Matt was a contract consultant, contractor, whatever. Mm-hmm. And uh, when I went over to his side of town to work on the site. His um, side of town? Well, because we was, I was northeast, he was southeast. And so when we go over there, these people are trouble. We never could figure out where to go for happy hour because uh-huh. I was used to happy hours in my neighborhood. Yeah. And so we like, you know, we should start tracking these mm-hmm. because it's time we were broken. Mm-hmm. We do, I mean, you know, cheap drinks are good drinks. Yeah. So being web geeks, we we're like, you know, obviously we should put this online. You know, Other we're, if we're going to track web happy hours, we'll put it online so that we can. If I'm at your office, mm-hmm. I don't have to have my paper mm-hmm. with me. Exactly. This is before the land of the iPhone. Yeah. Um, iPhone, how I love you. <clears throat> so we're like, okay, well, a couple of our friends were like, well, if you're going to put it online, you got to let us add to it so that we can have our happy hours on there too. Makes sense. Sure. Okay. No problem. Uh, we created a little site, had a very rough tool to allow you to add a happy hour. Mm-hmm. And at the time it used a Google mashup, which was, oh my gosh, you know, here's this database and it plots things on a map, which mm-hmm. was four or five years ago, actually pretty novel. It was early in the Google maps API phase. Um, and people just loved it. So we kept adding to it. And I think we had three versions of it. We launched different levels. Yeah. You know, we kept powering up. Mm-hmm. Um, and the site just, you know, got a little bit better, a little bit better, and grew a little bit more and a little bit more. And at one point, we had uh, 2,500 happy hours all over the country. Wow. And, but over time, we just kind of found other things going on. And it was never meant to be a um, financial project. Yeah. Uh, right away. It was asked, just a happy hour tracking yeah, project. Yeah, something for fun. Yeah. One of the things about it was whenever you have a website that deals with alcohol, the advertising laws are all over the map and they're different in every state. Yeah. So um, we just weren't going to get advertising Which from. Which is so difficult. That's difficult for, I mean, I can understand the advertising locally on like TV stations being different in every state, but when you're advertising on the internet. It goes everywhere. We talked to Widmere right off the bat because we were like, you know, we'd love to work with, you know, a local company and yeah. maybe highlight places that sell Widmere beer. And I like Hefeweizen. I'm not afraid to admit it. 
Um, and they were just like, you know, this is a great idea. We love it, but we can't even touch it because legally, different states, it's all over the map and, you know, best of luck. Yeah. And so from that point, we're like, hey, that's fine. You know, we don't need to make any money. This is a project of fun. Yeah. Um, it ended up getting us a lot of business. Like we got, oh, Matt still works there. Both Matt and I got job offers at Instrument after the only saw on Thursday. Wow. They heard about us. We had a conversation one afternoon. They looked at on Thursday. They're like, you built this without anyone else paying you just for fun? Yeah. And like, you know, some Bronx. time. <laughs> and they're like, well, get some time and some booze. Why don't you come back know. tomorrow and we'll offer you booze a job? Is good, right? So it, it may not have made us a lot of money, but it got us jobs. And Matt's still actually at Instrument. So. Very cool. Yeah. So um, anyway, we hadn't worked on it too much. And um, Matt sold another real small project called Twitter Local. Mm-hmm. And the guy was looking around at what Matt had done and said, oh, you also made this site called On Thursday. Would you, actually, would you be interested in selling that? I'm like, sure. So we negotiated a deal. And, and that was recently as well. Yes. Very recently. And more recently than the bacon sale, right? It was about a week and a half after bacon. Wow. Yeah, January was um, a good month. fire sale. <laughs> you know, end of the season, you know, got to start. Make room for new inventory. Mm-hmm. So new inventory is paleo plan. It is. Which is an so interesting let's, site. Let's just start by saying okay. what the Paleo Plan site is before we get into character assassination. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you finished that drink, hun. You're going to need it. <clears throat> Go ahead. So the Paleo Plan is a website that gives resources for people following the Paleo Diet. What's the Paleo Diet, Jason? The Paleo Diet is um, it's based. Is this the primal hashtag I keep seeing in Portland? It's definitely one of them, yeah. Okay. Primal, caveman diet, um, hunter-gatherer diet. Yeah, I have friends that like to call it the caveman diet, yeah. Um, the basic premise is uh, humans have been eating genetically very similar, or humans who are genetically similar to who we are have been for two and a half million humans years. Humans who are genetically I know, similar? I'm, excuse me, I'm not doing a very good sale right here. <laughs> okay. Humans for the past two and a half million have years, been eating humans have similarly. been evolving okay. and eating similarly for okay. two and a half million years. Around 10,000 years ago, okay. agriculture was introduced. Okay. That's the end of the Paleolithic and the beginning mm-hmm. of the Neolithic era. Mm-hmm. So around 10,000 years ago... You guys are getting an education. An education. I want you to listen. I hope I'm right. Um, if he's wrong, then I'm just going to... It's okay. <clears throat> so around 10,000 years ago, agriculture started, which then led to like you know things like wheat, rice, mm-hmm. um, as well as uh, farming of animals, which then led to dairy. Mm-hmm. So before 10,000 years ago, there wasn't access to dairy. There wasn't access to any kind of wheat uh, grain. Mm-hmm. So the premise of the paleo diet is man thrives when they eat like they used to, how okay. their body has evolved eating. So so meat-based protein. Meat and fish. Okay. Nuts and seeds, mm-hmm. fruits and vegetables. Okay. Um, with the basic idea of eat actual food, yeah. not processed Things. Don't don't go to McDonald's and toss out the hamburger bun and eat the right. Yeah, no. Which is I've I've known people that did the Atkins diet, which is a protein based diet as well. Right. That were like, oh, I'm gonna have a pizza. And I'm just gonna scrape the toppings off and eat that. So this is that would still be a lot of dairy. Yes. Yeah, so the the paleo diet is not a dairy. It's no dairy. No no dairy. Yeah. God, which I is love, in a lot of things, and like, it's very good. I like cheese. It's it's not an. The, well, so that leads to what I did. So, um, so g- there's sorry, a huge continue. movement of people following, starting to follow okay. this diet. And actually, I've done it very strictly for a short amount of time, like a hundred percent. Like one day? No, like a month. Okay. And I was a hundred percent strict. Okay. Nothing outside of that. No alcohol. Nothing. It was tough. Um, allow me to have wide eyes and. But I felt amazing. Yeah. And I was actually like, wow, I I get it. I get how. When people start eating this way, they want to stay that way. Yeah. But then the holidays came mm. and it just like kicked the door down on my freaking progress. holidays. And then things in January came. And so February, I was so on track again. I was yeah. dedicated. And then I don't know what happened. I'm drinking again. I don't know. I saw you on Wednesday. Yeah. I, I had a piece we, of pizza. We were drinking. You had pizza. There was rice on your plate, man. I had very little rice, though. I was really focusing on the chicken and the curry. Yeah, I like curry and chicken. So much more than I like rice. But anyway, I know I, I actually believe that the, um, when you follow it, you actually feel really good. And a lot of scientists have said the majority of people have a small wheat allergy. There's definitely celiacs who can't handle gluten at all. Correct. 
but a lot of people have a small inflammation response to wheat and the same with dairy. Mm -hmm. They're inflammatory by nature. Mm -hmm. So, um, no, I agree with the dairy thing. Definitely. Most people I know have some sort of reaction when they eat too much dairy. Right. And yeah. so this whole thing is, you know, if you can, that don't. sexy content right there, people sexy. have a reaction to too much dairy. <laughs> Just saying. So anyway, I, I recognize that there was a demand for, there was a growing demand, but the resource, resources online were actually pretty poor. Mm hmm. Um, my wife and I, while we were trying to eat paleo really strictly, we're noticing that, you know, really the trick is planning ahead. You cannot eat paleo unless you are very disciplined and being ready for I your I think meals. that's the same. That's that's true for any strict diet that you want to adhere to, be yeah. it, you know, if you paleo, wait, veganism. If you is wait that even the word hungry? veganism? Vegan. A vegan Veganites? diet. Vegemite? I don't, I don't, I'm not a vegan. You know, I don't know much about that. I sold bacon that. online. Yeah, I know, man. <laughs> Good for you. Uh, I love you vegan people. You're great, really. You are. All of you. I admire you, but I, I like to eat the animals. <laughs> <laughs> kind of sounds bad. I know. I tried to give up mammals for like a couple of weeks. <laughs> How long did you last? <laughs> a week. A week? Yeah. Ignite killed me. I needed a burger. What'd you have when you weren't eating mammal? Oh, actually, I don't really eat that much mammal. I eat a lot of fish and chicken, but but not being able to have any mammal at all, I kind of went a little stir crazy. And then when you're at a, you know when you're at the Baghdad, there's not a whole lot to eat, mm -hmm. and I needed to eat something to soak up the booze. <laughs> so I had a burger. How did it work out for you? It was good. <laughs> it was much better than it would have been if I'd been eating mammal for a week. I'm glad. Yeah. So, I'm, I'm all for mammal. So you've, I know, I so know. I recognize that there was a demand. We created a site. It's paleo yeah. plan. The short answer is after we've been talking way too long about it. Um, I create and distribute a meal plan mm -hmm. that's completely prescribed for every single meal of every, of the week, and comes with so a shopping list. So you can just list. go. Oh, I need, I need to eat the paleo diet. I'm going to go to this website, and you're going to tell me exactly what I need to be eating. Right. Okay. So if you, you get a shopping list. You With recipes? The, yes. You get a shopping list, you go to the store, you buy everything on the list. Okay. Then on Tuesday at lunch when you need to make your meal, mm -hmm. it says, oh, spicy tuna salad. You know that you have everything in the fridge already for it. And here's the recipe nice. for it. And then dinner, it's, I don't know, uh, chicken curry on cauliflower rice, which is actually delicious. Cauliflower rice? Yeah. Now, I never had this before. Expl is there rice involved in the cauliflower no. rice? You take cauliflower, you put it in I a food processor. Because, okay. You Like raw, you put it in a food processor. We microwave it just a little bit because it makes faster to cook. Okay. Just grind the hell out of it till it gets the consistency of about couscous. Uh-huh. Toss it in a pan, a little uh -huh. bit of olive oil, mm -hmm. maybe toss in a little curry spice. Mm -hmm. It comes out and it tastes just, it like it's a consistency that is similar to couscous, but it, you mm -hmm. can use it like anything you'd use rice for. It's delicious. Yeah. I was so grossed out when I thought about it. I'm not grossed out. I we like made cauliflower. It and it was unbelievable. It's actually like we've made it for a lot of our friends who just eat random food and it's great. Yeah. Random people who eat random food. Well they don't they, they don't eat fancy. They just okay. you know, they would go to McDonald's and get whatever. I wouldn't, but yeah. And this pleases them still. Nice. Yes. It is wide reaching in its appeal. Cha ching. Sorry, that was an empty glass sound. <clears throat> I wonder if there's anyone who can help us with that. <laughs> Maybe, Jason, if you could just set these glasses over there on that desk over there. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. So when did you start the Paleo Plan website? Um, and I what, is the, what, is the, what is the website? What's the web address? Paleoplan.com. Oh, so simple. Paleoplan.com. Uh, we launched the site uh, actually on Thanksgiving. Which is a terrible time to launch it a new is, business. because, hello, mashed potatoes. Yeah. But, but, but um, no, those are root vegetables, so can people eat those on the paleo? You can't have potatoes. Because I, you can't? Because they're starch, and they're really bad for you raw. They're toxic in their raw I state. I know they're bad for you, but they're potatoes. But if you can't eat something raw, Caitlin didn't eat it. Dude, have you ever had mashed potatoes? They're really good. And so are french fries. M not, no, french fries are nothing compared to good mashed potatoes. Wow. My wife would disagree with that. Really? I'm a mash. Oh, mm, maybe with a little truffle oil, I mm. might bend. But no, mashed potatoes are where it's at. That's my comfort food. Is it? Yeah. When I was a little kid, 
I, and all grits. I wanted grits was, also another food I can't have on the paleo diet, right? Nope, no corn. You can't have corn on the paleo plan? No. Do you so, not here's the thing about Do you hate do you hate me? Here's the thing about the paleo plan. If you think about what you can't have or the paleo diet, if you think about what you can have, Correct. you get frustrated. Oh, that's the, that's true of any diet. Sure, and but so, this is not a diet to lose weight. This is a lifestyle diet. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And specifically, a lot of athletes really tend to it, which I'm the perfect. Which uh, makes sense because person. of the protein. I'm a perfect spokes- spokesperson for it. Okay, sure. Um, <laughs> um, I'm still talking. If you think about what you can't have, it's really frustrating. At you. Now, if you follow the paleo plan, my side, which is what I offer, uh-huh. you're not focusing on what you can't eat. You're just focusing on what you will eat. Correct. And if it's prescribed for you, the question of what do I want is taken out of the equation. And I've actually had a lot I'm of a positive response. I'm a person. I don't know. And the funny thing is, is so am I. But <laughs> I get, I actually do a lot better if someone just tells me just eat this. So what carbohydrates are you allowed to have? Uh, fruits and vegetables. Okay. Natural. Now, obviously, okay. depending on your goals, you may choose to be... What about brown rice? You can't have that either? Did cavemen make brown rice? I don't know. They didn't. I know they didn't. They ate raw things. Yeah. The funny thing is, though, is I actually have a lot of friends who have had a lot of success with the uh, eat right for your blood type mm-hmm. type thing. Mm-hmm. So I can't say with 100%, con- you know, like, I am not a scientist. I don't have, like, absolute understanding of all this that's going on. And I'm not saying it's the only way to eat. I've found that for myself, when I follow it, I actually feel fantastic. I sleep great. I have high energy. I don't crash during the day. I get, I'm get. i motivated. I feel good. So I believe in it. Yeah. Um, I also believe that other things may work for other people. Yeah. And, but I also, so, but there's this demand and I am kind of a business person. So I saw it and I took it and yeah. I started the company and it's working out well. Good. Yeah. I'll be honest, when I'm eating less carbs and, like, way more protein and lots of fruits and vegetables, I feel way better. There's I really, I mean, I really, I really, really do. I had a, I had a blood sugar issue and my doctor was just like, okay, no sugar, no processed sugar, no simple sugars, whatever. No simple carbohydrates mm-hmm. and no processed sugars. And, and to me, I'm kind of lazy. And so when he says no processed sugar, no simple carbs, that means I stop eating carbs for the most part because I don't want to do the work. Like, you know, I can go buy Dave's bread, and that's fine. Right. And I felt a lot better when I was actively uh, eating that way. But it's a lot of work. It's hard work. One of the problems is a lot of low-carb diets, people Mm -hmm. um, actually stop eating carbs in general because broccoli isn't as good as your French fries. Actually, I really like broccoli. So do I. I love broccoli. But a lot of people stop eating vegetables. Correct. And so that's one of the dangerous things about never, I've never stopped eating vegetables. Is... You, you on the paleo like we have tons and tons and tons of vegetables. When I actually went to my doctor, she was asking how many vegetables I had a week, and I told her, and she was she like stopped and like looked at me, she's like, really? No one ever answers that. Yeah. <laughs> so you actually eat a ton of vegetables, and you know asparagus, broccoli, cauliflower, mm. um, a lot of Brussels sprouts. I like Brussels sprouts. So do I. And you, but and only if they're cooked properly. You get to use a lot of uh, people, olive oil people. and coconut oil. I don't use coconut oil coconut, very often. It's kind of expensive, but you can, it's tasty. Maybe I should try. I'll, I'll use a lot of olive oil. Yeah. I don't use other vegetable oils. I hate the whole canola oil shit. But, but if you get good olive oil, yeah. it makes things taste well. I know, right? Yeah. Yeah. I like the olive oil. I like the sautéed spinach. Sautéed spinach is great in eggs. Is great what? In eggs. Oh, no, I do. I like to saute the spinach and then put a little tomato and cook the tomato up and then uh, scramble the eggs over it and make a little frittata. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I've actually become I like breakfast. a lot better cook since but not I've been following the... it. Yeah. Because I've had to, like, branch out a little bit. Yeah? Before, Did you like to cook before? I hate cooking. You hate cooking still? Yes. I like people to bring me fantastic food. Really? I like cooking. Good. I should cook for you sometime. I love to cook. Name the time. I okay. love people cooking for me. You're going to have to come over for dinner and let me cook for you. All right. Uh, something totally paleo. I think I, I like cooking when I'm cooking for people. It's more fun when you're cooking for someone else because they appreciate it. Yes. And you usually put a little more effort into it. If it's me, I'm just looking No, I put a lot of fucking effort into the food I cook for myself. Really? Oh, I'm terrible. I'm like, like what are the four things I can grab that will solve this hunger problem? Oh, no. I really like... I like... I like to, I like to treat myself though, so maybe that's part of it. I really like to cook. If I'm gonna, I mean, there are times that yeah, I'm hungry and I need to eat something now. But I definitely 
like to cook for myself just as much as I like to cook for someone else. Mm-hmm. Like, there will be times that, like, my daughter's away, my husband's away, and I'm like, what can I make that will make Cammie happy? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No one else can have it. It's all for me. So what do you make? Mm-hmm. Uh, actually, the spinach and eggs. Because usually my alone time is during the day and in the morning. So I'll make, uh, I'll saute a bunch of spinach and eggs. I also have been known to make beef stroganoff. Yeah, you can't have that on the paleo diet because it's both dairy and carbohydrates. Yeah. Um, I don't eat a lot of pasta. I use wheat pasta, but that doesn't matter to the paleo diet. They're angry. <laughs> Those cavemen are angry. No wonder they drag their women around by the hair. They can't have pasta. <laughs> Yeah, they hadn't been taught manners yet. No. They're really bad with forks and spoons, too. Mm, yeah. I like forks and spoons as well. All right. Have we covered all the content? Can we do the other stuff now? Let's talk about something fun. We had, like, we had a plethora of information that we wanted to discuss. A lot of websites. What do you want to talk about? I don't know. Let's talk about South by Southwest. You've been. Yes. I have not. Which is a crime. I'm so excited. Oh, I'm just going to... I'm going to hold your myself. <laughs> I'm going to hold myself from the excitement that I'm going to South by Southwest. So what is your expectations as someone who hasn't been? What are you hope What are you thinking you're going to find there? I don't even know. I don't even know. I don't even know. I'm excited. I I have the iPhone app. I'm go through and I read. And to be honest, have you have you downloaded the iPhone app? I haven't. No, because you've been before. I have. Right? I'm like the newbie geek girl. I'm like, "Oh my god." I love this. So I've got like two talks that I have I'm scheduled to attend, and they're both people I know. I've got to go to Dylan Builder Shay's talk and Rick Trozzi's panel. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to go to those two. I have to figure out. I'm like, but everything else is so overwhelming for me. I'm like, there's like six billion talks, and then that's not even the important part. No, the important part has nothing to do with the daytime shit. Last year I didn't even have a pass to be honest. Yeah, I went to South by Southwest and I didn't have a pass. Yeah, I've heard that. I've heard several people say I'm not gonna pass. Yeah, I don't matter. think Scott's getting a pass this year. Yeah, um, I think Rick or Rick gets one because he's talking. He's kind of a big deal. Yeah, he's got a he's got a panel. He's the internet's Rick Tarosi. Yeah, um, he is the internet's Rick Tarosi. It's true. Um, he belongs to those internets. They own him. Yes. But he kind of whip cracks, whip cracks them back. Yeah. Um, he's not a nice man, no. I'm not going to say what I really think about Rick. <laughs> we'll, um, we'll get into that you. after the next martini comes down. Okay. So He does know to make them dirty, right? I'll drink it however he brings it down. He could just bring me a bottle of gin. I'll be fine. Have you seen how big my bottle of gin is? That's why I said he could bring it down. I'll be fine. <laughs> So, so we're not going to talk about how mean Rick is to the internet. But we're going to keep talking about South by. Yes, um, it's really great. One of the f- best things I, about last year was Tell just me what to expect. The best thing about last year was um, how much better I got to know people from Portland, which seems bizarre. That's what I was thinking about, and I, I was talking to Bill, um, Bill Duroche at uh, they had a South by Southwest beer and blog. Oh, did he go? Yeah, he was there. I was go. I and we were. It. I was there. I, I would have been. I would have been scary to you know you know me too well. I'm not scary anymore. Oh, Doctor Normal, thank you so much. Thank you. New class. Wow, I would have just reused the old ones, me but too. you know. Fancy. Thank you. Um, and and that was part. I think I'm, I could be attributed to the wrong person. I was drinking then. Um, and he was saying that, that it's interesting that you go down to South by Southwest and you wind up hanging out with all the people from Portland. But see. At you first, like I thought that'd be kind together. of lame, right? That's like a lame reason to go um, to like. That's a lame well, way to spend your time down there. But the reality is, you're all I, removed from your other obligations, right? And you see people all the time in Portland who you mm-hmm. really want to hang out with. They're really interesting, mm-hmm. and they're great people. But mm-hmm. if you don't have a reason to perhaps see them, you might not. Are you and I going to go drinking? <sighs> yes, sister, we are. Um, so I ended up hanging out with like Don Foster quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, I can't. Um, all the guys from the recently shut down, um, so sad, uh, Shizau. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I, I wouldn't have had a chance to meet a lot of those, you know. Um, yeah. And Jerry's great. I would never have met him. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, Scott and Rick and Toby. Um, I never probably would have hung out with Toby's Toby as much. Toby's not going this year. I know. Let's not talk about that. It makes Congratulations, sense. Toby. It's really exciting, but I'm sad for us. Yeah. He's having a kid. It's all... It's very exciting. It's exciting, but 
I mean, it's South by Southwest. I'm a bad person. You're a bad person. Let's be happy for him. I'm happy. He can for go him. next year. Yes, he'll be there. Okay. Do you know I've only met Toby once, and it was his floating head? You've only met Toby once? Mm -hmm. How is that possible? At 30-hour day, he came, and he stuck his head. Remember the little dressing room? Yes. He stuck his head in the dressing room and said hi, and then left. That's the only time I've ever met Toby. I thought he was imaginary before then. I'm sure Rick does have imaginary friends. That's not in question. No, but I thought that one was imaginary. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, no, Toby's like, great. Yeah. No, I don't know. I don't know that. I believe you. Unbelievable. This is the part of Strange Up Live where we talk about people that you guys don't know. But you should know Toby, and you should know... You guys know, should know. Um, all those people. All of the people. But no, like, Don's a perfect example. Like, I have a ton of respect for Don. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, socially our circles often miss. You know, yeah. we'll brush by. I like to see each other. I wave. never see you at Beer and Blog. You never go to Beer I and Blog. I used to go a lot, but then... It's I, really crowded. I try and spend some time with my wife. Really? Some time. Hmm. Huh. And she's not as into the, the geek things as I am. I've so. met her once. One time. Once. You met her at... You had to have met her at uh, Sausage Bacon. Fest. Oh, Sausage Fest. She may have 03. been at, at Master Bacon, except that uh, except that you were scared of me or something. Yeah, and you were busy judging. I was very judgmental that day. Were you? I had a clipboard and an apron. You were busy. I was busy. You had a purpose. I had a purpose. Um, I may have stopped to have a martini or two. They had good drinks that night. They had really Do you remember good that? Drinks. The bacon flavored drinks. I had a sip of one, but I actually just. I'm a martini girl. This is pretty much my standard I've thing. I've noticed. I had yeah. to quit drinking martinis. Except for when you're with me, apparently. Because you were drinking them on you Wednesday, know, too. My rule is <laughs> I drink what people around me are drinking. Okay. But if I order what I'm ordering... What do you normally order? I switch to vodka sodas. Vodka sodas. Tall, tall glass. And we... This is... This is things that these are things that you need to know. Jason and I had a fantastic discussion on Wednesday night about what I should be drinking at South by Southwest in order to be able to consume more booze. And then martinis were not actually the way to go for no. me. Because mm -mm, mm -mm. four martinis, that's quite a bit of booze. It is. I and mean, it's actually, it's, it's more booze in my house because I make a full martini glass full of martini. Sure. A lot of bars will give you like the, you know. Not the Driscoll. No, that's what I've heard. I've been to the Driscoll. I have been told only to drink at the Driscoll. It's, they're stiff drinks. Yeah. Um, but one of the problems with a, mar a martini is it's only it's, booze. It, I know, right? But the thing look is, at, it's like. Look at the beauty. Look at the perfection. It looks really nice, Dr. Normal. Thank you, Dr. Normal. But like, if you have a vodka soda, you can go a tall glass, get quite a bit of soda water. But I don't like soda water. Just a bit too. All right, go ahead. And as you're drinking. You're drinking other things than booze for a while. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you can drink six ounces of something and only an ounce and a half is booze. Mm -hmm. This, I can go through this in three, four minutes and then eat another. Yeah, don't do that. No, it's bad. It's bad. So you, the other drink, the and this is actually the What was the drink. thing that you suggested that I drink? Um, tequila. I like tequila. Lime from one whole lime. Lime juice from one whole lime. I like lime. And soda water. And, and soda In a bucket. Yeah. I'm gonna have to think of something else. You know what? I don't drink. I don't drink soda because it's bad for me. Like if there's but soda water is very different than soda. I know, but I don't like soda water. I like soda. It's bad for me. It's the one thing that I really love. Oh, that's not true. We've discussed something else that I really <laughs> love that I gave up. Wow. But I really, really, really love soda, and it's the one thing that I really love that I was like, okay, no, I have to get rid of it. There are other things that I really love that I keep in my life, but soda is so bad for me. So but what if you just had rum and cokes in South by Southwest? I don't. I would have. I might have tequila and coke. Really? Yeah. You ever had tequila and Sprite? No. Hmm. You know what they drink? But you know what's important? If I'm gonna have that sugar anyway, I might as well have the caffeine. Yeah. You know what they drink in South America? They drink red wine and Coca Cola mixed. Now you think that sounds yeah. absolutely horrible, right? <laughs> That's icky. So we were like, no, I don't think it sounds awful. I know it sounds that's really awful. bad. That's icky. But um, so they'll take icky. either really inexpensive red wine, which uh -huh. is everywhere in South America because yeah. it's dirt cheap there. Mm -hmm. Or if you know, say you open a bottle and you don't finish it, and two days later, it's maybe not quite as fresh. Mm -hmm. Mix it with some red wine. It's actually way better than you think. Or mix it with some Coke. Um, Coke and red wine. Like we were horrified when we heard about it. I and think then, I'm going to drink a lot of tequila. And we Coke. tried it, and that's it was actually pretty do. good. No, I don't want to drink tequila, Coke, and wine. One of these days, I'll make you try it. I 
I will for you, but I'm not going to order it in a bar. No, you never order in a bar. You don't pay for that. No, no Because they charge you for the Coke and the wine. That's <laughs> disgusting. Right. You do that with that leftover bottle of wine you don't know what to do with that someone brought that wasn't that good. Yeah. Have you ever met my husband? He will drink the bottle of wine. It doesn't matter. See, my whole thing is once the <laughs> bottle of wine is open, it, it must does, be consumed. It does not finish the night. Yeah. So. I'm not a wine drinker. Really? Once, no. I mean, I will. I used to go wine tasting all the time. I used to drink a lot more wine. So this is but for the, Dr. Normal. The fact of the matter Red is, wine. the fact of the matter is, is that I like, I, I don't drink beer either. I like my booze to come in the form of hard liquor, occasionally hard cider. But it must have the word hard in front of it, apparently. <laughs> You're not after a soft drink? <laughs> not after no. a mild beverage? No. No malt liquors? No. High gravity? No. No, but I will try. I, I'm going to take your advice. I will drink. I will drink other. I love like a martini because I love. I actually really enjoy martinis. Absolutely. It's It's not the whole, oh, my God, I need to get drunk. No. It's that I really enjoy a good martini. That's why God made olives. See, that's the funny thing about me. I don't think that. Oh, I think I a really lot of have, people like, know. I, I only eat. Well, it has to be a good olive for me to to actually eat it and and these are the really good olives and i never would even worry about it except i have two people in my life that really enjoy the good olives mm. and when we record the we, you know over there studio b we do mean pdx mm -hmm. we've got producer morgan and um my my co-host rick trozzi who i'm looking to replace if anyone's looking to audition for a role say that again what what huh would you say he didn't complete his uh year-end review so he's on probation right now Rick Trosi? Yeah, so I might be looking for a new co-host. Rick, I'm coming for you. Your, time, your days <laughs> you are numbered. You want to try out? Yeah. Do you think we could do Mean PDX? Right now? Well, or no, because the chairs have shit on them. Oh, yeah, if that. Well, not real shit. Pillows and stuff. Stuff. Things and things. Yeah. So that, I, I would, I, I'll kill Rick. He's too nice. Good. That might be good. Yeah. We'll try it. Just, just let him know that there's other people on the docket. He has to carry his weight. <laughs> I'm coming for you, Rick. <laughs> Your niceness has its days numbered. <laughs> oh. What would it take to get Rick fired up? That's what I want to see. Besides his day job. <laughs> to get Rick fired? Oh, to get him upset? Yeah. His day job gets him upset every yeah, it morning. It does. But don't say that because I don't, I'm afraid his day job people will watch the show. No. <laughs> well, one of his coworkers will, but she won't tell. But I mean, not That's that nice. his day job gets him fired up. Everybody's day job gets him fired up. That's uh -huh. what I'm saying. Yeah. Every, nobody likes going to what work What do we have to do to upset Rick? What do we have to do to Rick upset Rick? At South By. <laughs> at South By Southwest. We really? We want to upset him at South By Southwest? Do you want to upset him or you want to rile him up? Just want to get him riled up. Not angry. Okay. But just ready to go. 30 hour day gets him riled up. Mm. He gets really, really, really excited when he gets to plan 30 hour day. Interesting. Yeah. So we should try and find some people at South, at South By okay. to be on 30 hour day. So in order to be cool, I have to call it South By? I'm just lazy. Okay. South by Southwest. A lot of extra syllables. It is a lot of extra syllables. A lot. Okay, yeah. so I'm going to call it South by because I'm lazy and cool. I'm not, I, I am lazy. I'm not cool, though. It's, I all, think it's all good. You're pretty. You're, I mean, it's your show. I think you're pretty cool. But I'm just saying that. Okay, so, yeah. So, why don't you give me... You want some of my olives? I'm only going to eat this one. Here. You can have that one. Wow. Thank you. Sir, I only need one olive per drink. Who are you? I have high blood pressure. Mm. There's a lot of salt in the olives. That's true. They have high sodium. <laughs> I'm just saying. And that's technically very non-paleo. Salt is bad for you. Really? God, I love salt. <laughs> Everything. Well, see, but that's the thing. Everything that you want. So what about sushi? Um, well... White rice wrapped sushi? I like sushi. So do I. There's a lot of rice in sushi for the most part. I like sashimi, but usually you've got the, the sashimi over the, mm -hmm. over the rice. And Personally. then you've got the soy sauce to dip it in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's good. Mm -hmm. It's good. It's salty and, and Even when I'm pretty strict on paleo, I still have a lot of stuff to have sushi because it's just a, it's, it's tasty. Okay. Um, These are things I have to know. But so, I mean, that's the thing, though, is... Our bodies are genetically designed to, to go desire. to South By because there's so much fucking barbecue, <laughs> right? Absolutely, <laughs> we're designed to want ribs. I like ribs. Have you been to Podnas? No. 
It's in Northeast. It's some of the great, greatest yeah, I've dry, heard of it. I dry rub there. rib. Fantastic. Yeah. You gotta go if you haven't been there. It's really tasty. See, I usually wait till my dad comes to visit because my dad makes some awesome beef ribs. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Usually, I wait till my dad gets here and then I have a party. Yeah. Interesting. You'll have to come to the next one, and then I make him make like a huge amount of beef ribs. You keep inviting me to eat here. You're gonna have to live up. to I this. like to feed people. You're gonna have to live up to this now, though. Okay. You've invited me. Okay. Twice. Yes, in one night. Okay. All right. You guys heard it here. I get to come. Yeah, I'm going to feed him. That's what I do. <clears throat> so we're going to go to South By. We're going to go to South I By. I hope you guys can come. Are you guys coming? Because we're going to be there. Which which uh, which of you out there are coming? Anyone on the lot? Raise your the... hands. Who's coming? Is anyone on the no commenting? They don't like us. I think Dr. Normal's coming. Dr. Normal, are you going to be at South by Southwest? He, he's not very excited. I'm super excited. I'm like, woo, vacation! And he's like, <laughs> oh, look. We're looking at the Silicon Florist website. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> That's my Super Bowl spot. What are we looking at? Super Bowl spot. Oh, we're going to talk about Jason Glassby being in the Super Bowl. Nice. Very clever. How many people do I know that have ever been mentioned in a Super Bowl spot? Let me count. Oh, one. Yeah. Just, just the, just the Jason. Yeah. Hello, friends. We have an injury report on Jason Glaspie. As you can see, his girlfriend has removed his spine, rendering him incapable of watching the game. Come on, silly. Boy, that's hard to watch. How about lavender? How about not? Jason, get yourself the Flow TV personal television. It's live mobile TV, so now live sports goes where you go. Change out of that skirt, Jason. A really good friend of mine, a uh, guy I went to college with, was in my wedding. I was mm -hmm. in his, uh, his name's Jason Pollock. He was oh, another Jason. Yeah. The Jasons likes to stick together. We're tight. He was uh, he was the writer on that project. Mm -hmm. he, he wrote the commercial, um, wrote up this spot where this guy gets called pretty much a Sally by Jim Nance. Yeah. And thought... It was a shopping-related... Yes. Thing, yeah. So uh, a guy gets drugged by his girlfriend to go shopping on a weekend, and he doesn't get to watch the game. And Jim Nance spends the entire commercial telling him to man up and take a skirt off. My Do you buddy, like to wear skirts? I don't, actually. <laughs> but my buddy figured out that this was a chance to give me shit in front of 100 million people, and he uh -huh. was going to put me into it. So um, when Jim Nance says we have an injury report, he says on Jason Glassby, which happens to be my name. Oh my gosh, your name's Jason Glassby? It is. Nice. So yeah, I got made fun of by my best friend um, from six, from 100 million people. Which is a pretty good it's a pretty good prank. You know what? That that's a pretty that's a pretty huge show of affection. Yeah. It really is. He's a jerk. Oh god, I love, love him. him. He's a great guy. Would uh, you like to would you like to call anyone else a jerk on my show that you absolutely love? Scott Cabeaton? Let's call Scott a jerk. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the thing. I really like Scott. Yeah. He's I really right do. Guy. He's a good guy. He's a really good You know what? Here's the thing. Scott, let me put makeup on him. He'd probably like it. It's the sad thing. I think I, I spent 30 minutes putting makeup on Scott Cabeaton to do the Halloween episode last year. Oh, he talked about that. Mm -hmm. I think he liked it, really. He probably did. I think he wants to come back on next Halloween episode. He should. Scott, can I have my camera? Oh, S Scott, could you come back? You don't have to be a zombie next time. Next time you could be I don't know, something else. What else could we make him up to be? Vampire. Morgan's doing this. Arr, I don't know what that means. Werewolf? Werewolf Were is going to be big next year. Werewolf is going to I have to have the hair. What's the What's the movie coming out with? Uh, Benicio del Toro? Yeah, Benicio. Is yeah, it I think it's already out, but I heard it was crappy. Really? Yeah. I, I'm a big fan of Benicio. I like Benicio as well. I really like him. After, I mean, Usual Suspects pretty Ugh. much set him up as the coolest guy ever. Dude, I like you. I keep liking you more and more. I'm a good guy. Yeah, yeah. What's your favorite movie? Pulp, fi or, Pulp Fiction is number two underneath Fight Club. Fight Club? Fight Club, then Pulp Fiction, yeah. Really? Yeah. Mm, I don't have a favorite movie. I have a favorite, like, top ten. It's hard for me. List a few of them. <sighs> okay, a few of my favorite movies. Anything that Terry Gilliam did. I'm cheating. Um... Maltese Falcon. Never seen it. 
Okay, before you leave, remind me to get you the, I, you have to borrow it. Okay. It's a really amazing movie. It's old. Have you ever seen The Tao of Steve? I have not. I've heard about it. I should watch it. Have any of you guys seen it? It's a phenomenal movie. Um, I'm going to Netflix it. The most ironic thing about this is this has been one of my favorite movies for a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, my cousin mm-hmm. uh, is now married to this guy, Derek Downen. Or Holly, my cousin Holly is married to a guy named Derek Down in Medford. And long story of a chain of events, they end up becoming really good friends with Donald Logue, the main actor in Dow Steve. Mm-hmm. So on my 30th birthday... Is it based on the book? No. Okay. On my 30th birthday, I get a phone call. And I answer it, and it's Donald Lowe, the main character from The Dow <laughs> Steve. And he calls me to wish me happy birthday on my 30th birthday and sends me a DVD of the movie with um, oh, Blake signed it. Oh, that's so sweet. Which is hilarious. And, I mean, the funny thing is, is I was a big fan of the movie way before um, they became friends. Yeah. And so, yeah, I've got to meet him. He's a great guy. So that was your 30th birthday. How old are you? 34. 34. I am. You're older than me. Am I? By a year. I mean, Ish. you what look, you, you what look you... like 28, so oh, I could never tell. Oh, you're sweet. Yeah, no. My birthday's on Monday. Her birthday's on Monday. So mm-hmm. what's that, March 9th, 10th? 8th. 8th. I'll be 33. 33? I'm very excited because it's a double number. Yeah, is that good luck or something? I have no idea. I just really like numbers. 33 is good for me, although 34 has started with a bang. Yeah? Yeah. When's your birthday? December. So you're going to be 35 this year. Yes. I Technically am. this year. Technically this year. It'll be a while. No hurry. Yeah. That's halfway to 70. Really? Are you? Do you have age issues? No, I just freak out over 35 because it's halfway to 70. I've heard a lot of people freak out over 35. So I'm going to, I'm not going to divorce my wife. That's not even a funny joke. <laughs> but I, I'm going to buy a Corvette. Oh my God. Can someone have my camera? Can I have my, he was joking and he's an asshole. So don't listen it's true. <laughs> I, I said I'm not even going to joke about that. I recognized that the joke wasn't funny. It was I pulled not. out halfway through. And I just, appreciate that you I went straight to the, I'm going to buy a Corvette. Okay. That's fine. Really? Gold chain. 35 freaks you out? Start wearing my shirt on button Did you know here. 30 didn't freak me out? Did 30 no, freak you out? 30 was great. I loved, I was super excited when I turned because 30. Because then I felt like people can quit treating me like I know. Like I was kid. like, I'm an adult now. Fuck off. You have to treat me like an adult. I yeah. look like I'm 12. I am 30. 30. When I was 33, mm-hmm. my, uh, Driver's license expired. Yeah. And people wouldn't serve me alcohol. I'm like, I'm 33. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, but your license expired. I'm like, well, I was 33, 30, 32 yesterday. Can I have it now, please? I could drink yesterday. And I felt like I still look young enough that people refuse to serve me. So. That's nice. It teaches you not to let your license expire, really. That's yeah. the long story of it. Yeah, no, I don't want my, no. I, I had to carry my passport around for three weeks because I, I was too lazy to go the to the DMV. That's what the passport's for. Yeah. I need to go get my passport. Do you not have a passport? I don't have a passport. Cammy Chaos does not have a passport. Have you ever been out of the country? Mm. Never? Mm-mm. Cammy. I know, isn't that sad? Texas you, is almost like one of the I used to live in Texas. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. So here's the big secret. It's not I even a big secrets. secret. It's not even that big. I, I grew up in Texas, like three years, during my formative speech years. So where's your accent? I had to go through, because I grew up, after I moved back to California, California did not like the little tiny blonde hair, blue eye. I dye my hair. No. I'm a blonde. No. What about your eyebrows? I dye my eyebrows. Bullsh- <laughs> you dye your eyebrows? I don't. Francis does. <laughs> Do you have photos of you blonde? You saw them upstairs. I saw you looking at them. But that was me. That doesn't mean that you're a blonde. No, that's my natural hair color. (laughs) Wow. That photo on the wall is my natural hair color. Do we have any photos we can put up? No. (laughs) Yes, I think we can get some (laughs) photos. Morgan does. Okay. Someone put up a photo of me as a blonde. How far back do we have to go to get blonde? So I started dyeing my hair when I was 15, and then I had a very brief blonde period when I was an adult. When I got married, my hair was actually blonde. Which was two years ago, 20 years ago? Um, I recognize probably not 20, 33. Um, eight, 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 eight years ago. We're getting the head nod from the husband. Yeah, I had, I had, I had a brief one year period of back to the blonde. Now how blonde? Are we like sandy blonde, dirty blonde? blonde. Dirtyish sandy. Okay, yeah. so not like 
Not like bleach. But when I was a Swedish kid, blonde. when I was a kid, I had bleach blonde hair. I'm I'm Scotch Irish and Finnish, so I had Finnish blonde hair. Mm. When I was until I was five, I was like see through hair blonde. Yeah, no shit. You could like yeah. So was, what were we talking about? They're looking up photos. Okay, find photos of me. That's fine. I have no idea what we were talking. So yeah, about. no, I I actually I don't you care really that people dye your eyebrows. My hair Is that does a lot her, of work. She dyes them and then she waxes them. Wow. Mm-hmm. Because they're so light that you can't, like, when when they're when they're not dyed, you can't see where my brows are. When they're when they're when they're not dyed. He's looking on Facebook. I can hear whispering. I don't <laughs> know if there's any blonde photos of me on Facebook. Huh? Fucking Facebook. <laughs> wow. We must be we must be in after hours. I think we are. Have we gone an hour yet? Almost. Okay. So when we go an hour, you let us know, and then yeah. we'll then we'll continue to live stream Facebook. and cut the show off. Yeah. So, so yeah, no, blonde. I get my eyebrows dyed and then waxed. I feel like this has been. I feel like we have. <laughs> I feel like this has been the most conservative I've been on air. Well, and do I something. Feel, do something drastic and see, extreme. I didn't have enough of these beforehand. I feel very. Oh no, no, you don't have to do that. We don't have time. Dude, have some. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's not me being blonde. That's me wearing a lamb hat. That is not me being blonde. Was that the lamb hat from 30 Hour Day? No. There was a lamb outfit at 30 was, Hour Day. But I didn't wear it. It was what some was other person. That? I don't know. It was an act. It was a, one of the skits. That Ms. Was, D. Ms. D wore it. That was my... Uh, there Really? You can't find any blonde photos of me? Is That is so sad. No, that's... Oh, me congrats. wearing a wig does not count. Me wearing multiple wigs does not count. Me wearing the blonde wig doesn't even count. You can't find a picture of me with my natural hair color? This is sad. sad. It's Facebook. I can't find you. You must not have very many photos. No. <laughs> I don't like Let me to rephrase that. <laughs> very photos of you blonde. No, actually, that's true. I don't have a lot of... I, I feel much more comfortable with dark hair. You know what's funny? I used to have my hair down to here. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's a new look for you, for sure. I was inventorying our costumes. Our costumes. How many costumes do you have? A lot. <laughs> Is this... How much time do you have? I have a spreadsheet to keep track of them. Bullshit. You have a spreadsheet for... Pardon my French. <laughs> really? Yes. Wow. For costumes that, and wigs, yeah. That's actually phenomenal. <laughs> I have a lot of respect for that. My wife has worn a wig one time. It was for the weekend. So my wife and I broke up while we were dating. Mm -hmm. And we got back together on Halloween mm -hmm. uh, seven years ago. Mm -hmm. She came as Run, Little Run. Nice. Best costume ever. Mm -hmm. Ever. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the only time she's done anything like crazy with her hair, which was pink. But so when I think about crazy hair with my wife, that's it. That's it. But it's a great... One memory to have. Yeah, I mean, it is. Lola is the shit. I was yes, a Star Wars kid that year. Star Wars kid? You haven't seen Star Wars kid? Can we get a video clip of Star Wars kid? I think yeah. the show's almost over. We're going to have to head into after hours. So what happens now that we don't do after hours is we cut the show off and we say this is the end of the show. Ha <laughs> ha. And then we keep rolling the, the live stream. We just don't give it to the to the people who the are downloading. The podcasters miss out? Yeah. That's why you say you That's show why up. we had the live stream, baby. Mm-hmm. Is it time to wrap it up, baby? Okay, Morgan says it's time to wrap it up. So let's, what, do we have any parting thoughts? If we want to find Jason, we go to jasonglassby.com. Is that true? That's, it's very outdated, but there is pr a presence there. Yeah, yeah. Or we go to Jason Glassby on Twitter where he talks about hedgehogs. I'm excited. Like, so hedgehog, I'm so confused. Let's talk about the stirring after hours. Yeah, Seriously. there's so many animals out there. We need an office pet. Okay, we're going to discuss this. Okay. But we're going to wait a few minutes because I think Morgan's going to roll the credits. If you look over there, you can see the credits. Yeah. Strange of Live. Oh, look, Cammy Chaos. I'm the host. Oh, you are. You're hosting very well. I host some shit. That's what I do. The worst thing is, these are for like Yeah. I should have had two before I came. No, it's cool. It's cool. It's cool because we can get you another one. But I would have been a lot better. I would have been much more interesting. Give yeah, me a live stream. I love you. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> this is the role is me wearing wigs. Nice. Nice people. I was inventorying the wigs. I wanted to have, like, I wanted to have information. Oh, those are the butt rock wigs. Yeah, nice. Do you really have a spreadsheet? Have you seen how many wigs I have? Can you imagine how many costumes I have? Where? Uh, 
Why do you have so many costumes? I like to dress up. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Dad, Dad, those are Dr. Normals. But I wore them anyway. Well, um, so how often do you dress up? That's yeah. a better question, I guess.